Hello everyone, first of all I would like to thank the CIFA, Early Career Special Interest Group and the Council of British Archaeology for organizing this set of conferences during the Festival of Archaeology. I think it's such a nice opportunity for us, young researchers, to get to know each other, get to interact with each other and in general just to know what the future of archaeology will be like. So in that regard, uh, thank you. My name is José Riflores. I am currently studying the Master in Prehistoric Archaeology in the University of Geneva, Switzerland. Uh, and I'm also a member of the Atlas Research Group from the University of Seville, where I graduated last year uh, from my degree in archaeology. So the title of the conference I'm presenting to you today is La Peña de los Enamorados, Santa Queda, Spain, between archaeology and legend in a world heritage site. And just to give you a little bit of context, La Peña de los Enamorados, which can be translated as the mountain of the lovers, and we will see why afterwards, it's a limestone promontory that rises around 870 meters above sea level next to the cities of Antequera and Archidona in the region of Malaga in southern Spain. So this mountain really stands out in the landscape due to its shape. As you can see in the pictures, it reminds us to a human face looking up to the sky. We can say that it has a really powerful anthropomorphic morphology and this has given it a lot of fame into Andalusian and Spanish folklore, especially because of a medieval legend that we will deal about later, but also because of recent discoveries, uh, archaeological discoveries, that uh, will be the main focus of, of this presentation. The objective of this presentation is giving you information about the the data we have until now and the objectives that we have set up to the future of research in this landscape, in this incredible landscape. La Peña de los Enamorados was declared World Heritage Site by UNESCO in 2016, all together with the karst formation of El Torcal and the Antequera Dolmens, which are the dolmens of Viera and Menga, and the Tholoi of El Romeral. So in this land we can see a very profound relationship between heritage and landscape and probably the best example of that is the relationship between La Peña de los Enamorados and the great dolmen of Menga of uh, Neolithic uh, chronology around the beginning of the 4th millennia BCE. So megalithic uh, monuments in southern Spain tend to be oriented towards astronomical features, maybe to a solstice, maybe to the east, to the sunrise. But in this particular case, the great dolmen of Menga, its 45 degrees main axis, is facing directly towards the chin of the mountain, towards a small cavity that is called Abrigo de Matacabras, and where a schematic rock art uh, was found. So that gives us a very important hint that, about the relevance that this mountain had in the cosmology of the Neolithic people uh, living in Antequera in the 4th millennia BCE. So the name Mountain of the Lovers has traditionally been thought to come from the Legend of the Lovers, which is a medieval legend first recorded in the 15th century by humanist Lorenzo Bala. This legend tells us the tragic story of a couple, of a Christian man and a Muslim woman, that after the night got captured by the woman's father in battle, they met, they fell in love and they tried to escape uh, together, they ran out and the father didn't really like that so <laughs> he pursued them with, the, with his troops. So the couple got cornered next to the mountain, to La Peña, they tried to climb it to see if there was an escape, there was none. So seeing that there is no future they decide that before breaking their love it's better to die together in a very Shakespearean way so they embrace themselves and they throw themselves off the cliff uh, falling just next to the warriors that starts uh, falling down in tears uh, they buried them there and they started calling the mountain the mountain of the lovers we know that this legend uh, is not the origin of the toponymic because uh, we know that in the 12th century the place was already called Mountain of the Lovers in Arabic, but nevertheless it's a very important legend in Andalusian and Spanish folklore, and we know that in, modern, uh, in the modern era it was very important also in U a European context, in a wider European context, as we have many representations of the mountain and of the legend. Leaving the legend behind for now, <laughs> we can focus now into the archaeology of La Peña, which obviously I think you will find quite more interesting. So despite the importance of the folklore, of the legend and the mountain and everything, we have to say that the first archaeological works there were pretty, pretty late. We have to wait until the 1960s to start seeing some publications about the archaeology of the southern part of La Peña. And just to put it into context, the great dolmen of Menga was first published 
in 1847 by architect Rafael Mitiana uh, as a druidic temple, but it's just to point out that archaeological works were being done in the Antequera region quite earlier, not in La Peña. So these first surveys discovered a Calcolithic slash Bronze Age settlement with, building, uh, with buildings made out of mud bricks that sadly are not preserved uh, nowadays, and also a lot of material, especially pottery, some lithic artifacts, and also some metalworks. Uh, later, in later campaigns, they discovered across the Guadalhorce River a Roman necropolis that is called La Angostura, where uh, excavations were held and they found out 14 tombs uh, and in which between the most classical typologies of Roman tombs, the Tegulae, uh, they found some really interesting ones. As you can see in the pictures, they are pretty big uh, slabs made out of stone, which can remind us a little bit to uh, some megalithic tradition, but uh, well, nevertheless, uh, there were no grave good in any of the tombs, uh, the human remains were pretty bad preserved, so there's not a lot of scientific information about this necropolis uh, apart from the architecture and the orientation of the tombs, which is sad because it really looks like a very potent uh, occupation in Roman times in La Peña in this southern part. After these initial works, we have to wait until the 2010s for the northern part of La Peña to get uh, researched uh, in an intensive manner. But uh, it's a very interesting area and we can focus on two different features. The first one is the already mentioned Abrigo de Manta Cabras, which is where the big Menga Dolmen is facing. And the other one is La Tumba de la Peña, the Tomb of La Peña, which was excavated in a campaign in 2020. So to start with the Abrigo de Manta Cabras, it's a small natural cave that is located in the chin, in the so-called Tajo Colorado, which means the red cliff because of its color. And there we find almost 20 traces that form ambiguous figures. Uh, and a study that was published in 2018 tried to date them by Uranium Thorium. And although it was not super successful, uh, we know for a fact that the paintings were older than the 3800 BCE, that is the date of the construction of the Dolmen of Menga. So we know that the paintings were there before the Dolmen and the constructors of the Dolmen knew these paintings and decided to orientate these enormous constructions towards La Peña, towards the Tajo Colorado and towards Matacabras, which is pretty interesting really to understand or to get to understand the cosmology of Neolithic Antequera. The second feature we have to talk about and probably one of the most important in all La Peña is La Tumba de la Peña, La, la Peña's Tomb. It was discovered and excavated in 2020. It's a megalithic tomb, it's a megalithic structure, very complex. Uh, three layers that we will talk about that in a moment. It's 4.5 meters long, 1.5 meters wide, and for example, it uses the natural sedimentations for its eastern wall. So here we have a very powerful symbiosis between megalithism and just the nature, the environment, the landscape, and, and just to put it into context, the, in the front, in the atrium, we are fine two stelae, and at the back of the chamber we have a slab with the so-called ripple marks, which are small undulations uh, from the rock when it was formed underwater, uh, which must have had a very strong symbolic component uh, for the builders of these monuments, because for example we find a very similar one in the big tholoi of El Romeral in Antequera. So, we know that they chose the, those rocks and that they placed them in very important places. So, as I said, the tomb has three different layers and human remains have been found in each of one. So we can date uh, each of the layers. We know more or less the biography of the monument, which is nice, uh, but it's also very complex. So just to start with the first level, the, the older one, uh, we could date it around 3000 2500 BCE, so late Neolithic, early Copper Age. And so the minimum number of individuals there were five. It was an ossuary, so they were not in anatomical connection. The second one is the best preserved in terms of human remains because it housed two inhumations uh, whose state of preservation was excellent. The, the bones were anatomically connected and the depositional structures uh, 
were preserved so we could see the niches and it was pretty pretty, pretty nice i'll tell something about these two individuals later uh, we could date them around 2600 and 2400 so it would be the end of the calcolithic period in southern iberia and finally the most superficial level was used also as an as an ossuary for at least eight individuals uh, and the tomb underwent a process of morphological change um, and the chamber was sealed. So it was the end of, of the usage of, of, of the tomb. And um, this phase would be dated in the early Bronze Age around 1900 and the 1700. Okay, to support what I've just told you, I'm going to show you the locations of the places I've been talking about with this leader model that I've built with uh, open access data that the Spanish government uh, published, uh, which is very nice. <laughs> so here in the southern part uh, is located the Calcolithic slash Bronze Age uh, settlement. Here across the Guadalhorce River is where uh, is located the necropolis of Langostura, the Roman one. And then if we go to the north, here in this cliff, in the chin of the of the mountain, uh, is where uh, the Abrigo de Matacabras is located with the schematic rock altar. And then here in this small hill is where uh, La Tumba de la Peña is located. So what's the problem here? Well, the problem is that uh, this landscape, although it's uh, world heritage, has never been approached in a holistic manner. So the objective of my master's dissertation is to do some intensive surveys that we already applied for and afterwards generating some cartography, some update, updated cartography with all the archaeological information we can get from the surveys, from the information that we have beforehand and to really approach La Peña de los Enamorados as a site in all matters, not south, not north, as a site, to try to understand in a holistic manner, in a diachronical manner, the occupation of La Peña. So that's the objective of the, of the master's dissertation that I will be handing in the University of Geneva in next summer, probably. So I hope everything goes well. Uh, the surveys are supposedly going to be done uh, this autumn. So, well, <laughs> I, I cross my fingers to, for everything to go right <laughs> and we, ha we can get some decent information of this amazing uh, archaeological site of this amazing landscape. Okay, so just to end up on a fun note, uh, do you remind the legend of the lovers? Okay, so they were buried just at the feet of La Peña. So do you remind the second layer of the tomb? There were two individuals, they were contemporary to each other, they were mostly the same age, one was a female, the other one was a male. Did we find the origin of the legend of the lovers in the Calcolithic period? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. It's almost impossible and it's impossible to know. But nevertheless, it's one of those funny coincidences that tell us about a legend of two people being buried at the feet and then we find two people buried in the, in the feet of the mountain. Which, um, But I like to end up with this uh, fun note, with this uh, little joke. Um, and well, thank you so much for listening to me. Uh, if you have any questions at all, if you have any doubts, I will gladly answer to any of it in the email I've put in down below here so don't be afraid to ask anything and again thank you for the opportunity to do this presentation to do this conference I think it's such a nice uh, idea for us to to be able to present uh, our research or little research um, and yeah thank you so much for your attention for the opportunity and I hope everybody is doing well, so I hope that you enjoyed the, the rest of the festival. So take care and goodbye.